Hey, I'm Shawnee McElaine Holloway, and we're gonna talk about twine. So you've written your story, you kind of have an idea of what narratives you're working with, and now we just have to figure out how to electrify them or URL arise. Is that a word? URL, URL arise? How do I spell that? Um, we're going to now take you from the beginning steps of downloading and understanding what twine is to looking at the documentation to actually making our first story. So for those of you who are super advanced, you're going to pick up on this really easily because I want you to kind of dig through the documentation. I'm also going to give you some tasks that are specifically um, not talked about in this video but you can find the answers within the documentation. For those of you who have never worked with documentation before, don't worry and interact in our Discord and we'll come to your troubleshooting uh, task altogether. Um, yeah, so let's begin. So one of the things that we really need to understand when we're working with any sorts of software or just computers in general is to how to problem solve uh, for ourselves. And sometimes learning how to problem solve doesn't necessarily mean actually solving the problem, <laughs> weirdly. But what it does mean is understanding the process with which we use to try to solve the problems, right? But the documentation is something that we're going to use to be able to accomplish this, the trying to solve the problem, and maybe even the solving the problem. Much like if you didn't know where to find something, the first thing that you might want to do is go up to the toolbar in your browser or your system and look for a kind of lead within that toolbar or system. It's kind of like the instruction manual. The documentation for a software is exactly like an instruction manual and will tell you everything you need to know typically. So we're going to show you how to get there. Here we are. So it's going to have a whole bunch of links uh, attached to it, but the one that we really are going to pay attention to is this SugarCube version 2 documentation. When we go to the SugarCube version 2 documentation, we're going to see this left sidebar full of all kinds of words. <laughs> and then we're going to see a lot of different kinds of just more words, <laughs> I guess, on this side. But as you can see, a lot of these um, words on this right hand side are going to look really familiar as code. One thing that you might need as we go through our story building process is markdown. Markdown is the kinds of styling that we do. So if you're familiar with HTML, you're going to see um, the kind of equal and equivalent code for bold italics and things like this. That is here. Um, emphasis is what they're going to call italics though. So when you want to have emphasis on a piece of text, you're going to put these back forward slashes. You're going to put these forward slashes on and around your text. To have something be bold, it's going to be called strong in this case in sugar cube and so on and so forth. You might find as you're sort of sifting through this documentation is that you might just not really know where to find what you're looking for, but you know some keywords. So say like, oh gosh, I wanna change my background because you're trying to deal with your CSS sheet or something. One of the sort of strategies you can use in a big sort of online manual like this is hitting Control F. So if we hit Control F, we bring up our finder and all we have to do is type in background and voila. Sometimes these keywords help us to find the things that we're looking for, even if we don't necessarily know how to do the thing that we're looking for. Hopefully when we search it, what we find is what is going to allow us to understand how to like kind of complete our goals. So like I said, the documentation is really important. It's really robust, but ultimately it's going to be the thing that helps you complete your story and helps you be the most creative that you can be. So what I'm going to ask you to do first is go to twinery.org and that's T-W-I-N-E-R-Y dot org. This is a software that works both as an app and also in the browser. Both the app and the browser are basically the same thing. They look the same, they have the same buttons, you can find everything in the same place, except for the cache system or the system that actually keeps your record of what's 
going on within your story and what you've already programmed is going to be stored differently. So those of you who are going to use the browser version, you're going to want to make sure to download all of your projects, all of your process, everything, all the time so that you know that you have the proper documentation of that. Because if you clear your cache in your browser or if you have it set to kind of reset every single time you open your browser for safety purposes or something, um, you're going to lose all that information. With your software, you're not going to necessarily lose that information as easily, but it's been known to happen. Sometimes it's going to be a little unstable. So this is Twine. This is the front page. You're going to have a little bit of an explainer up here, um, and you're going to kind of notice these words interactive and also nonlinear a lot in the language of the coming sort of instructions. The way you download Twine is here. This is going to be download 2.3.9. Just click on this. Um, it's going to bring up this window asking if you want to download. Hit OK. And then you're going to go ahead and just run this, um, this install. The other option that you have, like I mentioned, is that you can use it online. So I'll show you what it looks like online. When you go online, it's going to just explain to you a little bit about how Twine works. You hit tell me more, it's going to give you more information and links to the documentation. And it's also going to tell you a little bit about how Twine data is actually saved. So now we're in Twine. We have zero stories up here and nothing is saved. You can organize them by date or name in case you're the type of person who likes to sort of keep things in a version file. Um, then we have this toolbar here on the side. You're going to add story to make a new story. Uh, this is how you import from a file. So once you've saved your twine, you can bring it back into it just in case that file got deleted. Um, and also there's going to be this button called formats and the story format is really going to be important. All of these um, formats are basically like WordPress. So it's going to be something to build on top of and they each kind of have their own styles just like WordPress is, um, you know, a blog, a blogging platform, so to speak. And you can play around with these, but my recommended format is Sugarcube. Sugarcube is going to be definitely the most malleable, definitely the most beginner friendly, um, and definitely the most exciting. So we're going to hit Sugarcube 2.31 because that's going to be the, like, the newest and we're going to kind of bring up the documentation so that we're not lost and we're going to click out of that you also if you don't want to work in english you're welcome to work in a different language there's a help button um, and you can also turn it to dark mode if you prefer dark mode so we're going to hit a new story we're going to ask what it's going to be called um, let's make a story about because shopping has been on my mind I would really like to go to a crowded place, and we know that can't happen right now, um, is call it the mall. So we will have a trip to the mall. So then we hit add, and this is our default story state. We have this thing called a passage here, and they show up as these little squares. These squares also have controls attached to them. You can delete a square by hitting this trash button, you can edit a square by hitting this little pencil button and you can play it or see from that particular passage forward where you are in the game. Uh, and I'll show you that in a second. Then this is an even more sort of in-depth menu. Um, you're gonna have start story here and you're gonna be able to change it. So I like to have my story um, passages really large. So here, I'm gonna make them that way. When you double click on this passage, that's going to take you inside the page or the passage. So for those of you who already know how to kind of code websites by, you know, manually, this is more or less like a single HTML page. And so when we export this, you will also see this untitled passage line here. That's the title of the passage. And so because our story is called the mall, I'm going to maybe make it uh, as like a day, a day in you know, the life of the journey of going to the mall. Then we have the section for tags. If you get to the point where you're using tags in your code, they become really important to be able to tell the computer exactly where you need to go when calling functions. And we don't have any tags now, so we'll get to that later. 
Then when you double click, the, click this passage, you can edit it. This, you just start typing. The nature of choose your own adventure stories is that you want to provide a way to go from one page to another. And just, you know, the language of page here is really nice and coincidental because page can be a page in a book but it can also be a page in the HTML. So it's nice kind of dual thinking. Let's just make some basic choices. We can link to the next passage. I can be like bracket, bracket. I get, so I get up, eat breakfast, get dressed and go to the mall or the ball, <laughs> but mostly the mall period, bracket, bracket. Or I can say bracket, bracket, oh, I cry. I would absolutely cry if I broke the button on my favorite jacket, by the way. Just fun fact about me. <laughs> so we have these two things. These brackets indicate links. Again, for those of you who are familiar with HTML, you're basically replacing a href with these brackets. So let's see what happens when we do this. All I have to do is click out there. So as you can see, I put two links so we got two different ways to go. So we're gonna branch these out here. So when I hit the play button, you go to, we open up a HTML page. So we have, so I get up and get dressed and go to the mall. And if I click on that, it takes me to a new page and back. And so I cry, which also takes me to a new page. So anytime you wanna designate a link, we wanna use these square brackets. So now that we have a way to create different options, what if we want to add our links within the text, right? Um, this is how you do it. So we want to say after, so I cry. So maybe we want to wipe our tears away with our jacket. And maybe we want jacket to be the link. All we do is we put our brackets here. We use this straight up and down line that's right up after the delete. And then we have to put the story title, right? So we have the text and then we have the title be the thing that links us somewhere else. So maybe the thing that comes after cry is yet an idea, right? So we have these brackets set in a new place. And again, all you have to do is click out of that and we have two new places to go. So let's play through that and see what happens. So last night I broke a button on my favorite jacket. So I cry, wipe our tears away with our jacket right? And jacket is that link and cry some more. So we're going to use jacket here um, to click and that works. Another feature on this is that there's going to be this debug console. And when there's something wrong, it will bring up a list of all of the bugs. So we'll get to that later too. So one thing you might ask is like, why is there this link language here when it should just be normal. Well, that's just indication right now because we are in debug mode. If we wanna get out of that and see what we've done with our progress without the tech uh, kind of commentary, all we have to do is exit out of that and we can go to this play button here and we can hit play. And typically that will take out all of that debug information. So what you see when you hit play is going to be what you export when you sort of download this particular story that you're writing and re-upload it to either the app or the website to work on more. So why don't we do that so I can show you the desktop app. In order to download your progress, what you have to do is you have to go back to the main menu. And in order to re-access your story, you see that there's this little square here. That's where your story is being kept. If you hit this settings button, it looks like a little gear wheel you have some options. You can play story, you can test story, which is the different modes that I just showed you. You can publish the file, you can rename the story, you can duplicate the story so that you don't lose one version and you can start a new one and you can just completely delete it. We're going to publish it HTML if you wanna notice that. And again, we're dealing with HTML files because we're going to eventually put this on the web and this particular software was made to make work for the web. So we're going to save this file. I'm gonna find it. Cool, so we have it saved here and I'm gonna reopen it in the desktop app. And we'll open Twine. As you can see, I've been working with Twine for a really long time and so I have many stories that I can reaccess. 
The first thing that you do when you want to bring your story into the desktop app or into the browser, any Twine software, you want to just say import to file. So remember we have this HTML file here. All we have to do is choose the file name and it should just end up somewhere in our Twine. So here we are. And it's just as easy as that, except for you won't have to dig through millions of Twines to find yours because maybe it will be the only one. Um, right, so here we are back in our game. And in order to play your new game, all you have to do is hit play and it will bring up a new window with your Twine game in it. And here we are with our two choices. Oops. Yep, so that's all folks, that's all for today. I really look forward to seeing your stories. Please send them to me even if they're not finished. I wanna see them in progress. I wanna see the beauty you create. So put this in the Discord or hit me up however feels natural. And yeah, thanks for watching. I really look forward to seeing you next week and I will, yeah teach you how to make it cute. I'll teach you a little bit of CSS to get you started, send you on your way with the documentation to kind of learn more about how to make it cute on your own. If you need help, I'll be right there to help you and I will